You know guys, just like most people, there was a time when if I heard of Bollywood or Indian cinema, all I could picture was silly dance sequences. <laughs> And bad action scenes. <sighs> Until one day I finally decided to seriously dive into it and lo and behold, what I discovered was a vibrant explosion of colors, a beautiful chaos and a touch of glorious madness that delivers an unparalleled joyride. Well, don't worry, both the dance scenes and the gravity-defying stunts are still very much there, but the quality is much better than whatever you might imagine. By the way, in case you didn't know, Bollywood is just a part of Indian cinema, and in this video I will be talking about the entire country, and not just the famous studios from Mumbai. So let's dive in, and let me tell you exactly why I absolutely adore Indian cinema. <laughs> Cinema is a visual art. Unfortunately, it seems that many directors and producers, especially in Hollywood, have misplaced that memo, probably buried under a pile of budget sheets or lost somewhere in the land of snobbery. What really grinds my gears is the exaggerated hype around dialogue from movie critics and film lovers alike. Don't get me wrong, I love a well-crafted line. But seriously, if you're just here for that, go pick up a book, pal. <laughs> and this is where we get into the first rank of Indian cinema. It did not forget what it's supposed to accomplish, which is to tell a story using the power of the moving pictures. Their movies take you on a mind-blowing journey into a world where stories are epic, music is magic, and colors dance like they do at the Holy Festival. They're a celebration, a feast for the eyes, a never-ending spectacle. In India, one of the most popular type of movies is affectionately called masala, a nod to that legendary mix of spices. To understand the essence of a masala movie, imagine if a mad scientist chef got hold of the script and decided to throw in every genre known to humanity. You'll go from belly laughs to heart-thumping romance to sobbing your eyes out, all while getting your action fix quicker than you can say, but wait, there's more. Here's the twist though. Unlike Marvel movies that can never decide whether it's time to be serious or to whip out the punchlines, Masala movies stick to their genre guns, offering a seamless blend between emotions. If a scene is meant to be funny, you'll be rolling on the floor with laughter. If it's aiming for tears, prepare to flood the room with your emotions. No out of place one-liners are tolerated here and thank god for that. What's funny is that Hollywood used to whip up this very cinematic concoction a long time ago, before it decided to only color inside the genre lines. A great example of that is Wings, the first movie to win Best Picture at the Oscars in 1927, a wild medley of romance, drama and some epic war action akin to the Masala movies of today. Hollywood, you should really take notes from your own past. Now, sure, Masala movies are as bonkers as the entourage of a Bollywood star, and realism often gets thrown out of a window like last year's fashion trend. It's as close to actual Indian life as a cactus is to a snowman. But that's the beauty of it. It might not be a reflection of a real India, but it's a slice of India that we wish existed. It's a place where love conquers all, and where hope, however dreamy and far-fetched, feels like it's just around the corner. I see it as the sign of a film industry that wishes to glorify beauty and entertainment above all else, which is something the world desperately needs. Art should make us dream and inspire us, and that's exactly what Indian movies do. Next to Masala movies in the world of big Indian productions, we also find a lot of epic historical dramas. And god they're gorgeous to look at. The sets, the costumes, the cinematography, everything is as grand as the Taj Mahal itself. Tech note western studios, this is how you glorify history and make it exciting. That doesn't mean though that all Indian movies are just pure spectacle. Bollywood and its counterparts in the rest of the country also produce a lot of other styles, from pure comedies to thrillers. It is as rich of an industry as its famous culinary counterpart. Whatever you love, you'll find it there. For example, one of my all-time favorite movies is Like Stars on Earth, the touching tale of a kid with a learning disability. No mix of genre spices here, just a moving story with a beautiful message. India is full of such touching movies. Now, a criticism very often addressed to India is how it borrows from other movie industries. 
Which is just a polite way to say they often just straight up plagiarize. <laughs> if some movies are indeed just a lazy copy paste of what others have created, it is still quite common for Indian filmmakers to add their own mix of spices to the recipe they're boring. A wonderful example of that is Gajini, the unofficial remake of Memento. While it clearly takes a general idea of a movie from Christopher Nolan, the characters and plot are so wildly different that it feels more like an homage than actual plagiarism. So while some will badmouth the director for taking an idea that's not his, I see it as just applying the old adage dear to the likes of Tarantino. Good artist copy, great artist still. Another aspect of Indian movies that I absolutely love is the lack of political correctness. No walk lectures here, just the glorious, unfiltered, unapologetic essence of what movies are supposed to be, an escape from reality. In a world where Hollywood has been taken over by liberal insanity and is more worried about ticking as many diversity boxes as humanly possible than making good movies, Indian cinema marches to the beat of its own doll and it really is a breath of fresh air. Obviously, I'm perfectly aware that Indian cinema, Bollywood in particular, is not immune to unnecessary preaching or the occasional controversy, especially when it comes to the touchy subject of religion or ethnic minorities. But from a Western perspective, their movies are incredibly based, which is quite ironic because from Indian standards, they're often considered a bit too liberal. This difference really puts into perspective how far the West has gone into unrestrained liberalism, but that's a topic for another time. In the end, even though Indian cinema might stumble here or there, especially when it comes to the lack of budget in the CGI department, take a close look and you'll see the brilliance that shines through. It's a roller coaster ride of emotions that sometimes derail into ridiculousness. But you know what? It's also these flows that make it utterly, delightfully, and sometimes hysterically entertaining. It's a mix of spice, spice and more spice that creates a cinematic curry with a flavor like no other. In a world where Hollywood has become a little too fond of reboots, prequels and sequels, India thrives on the unexpected and the magical, standing triumphant. It's not perfect, but its imperfect, colorful chaos is a reminder that movies aren't just about reality. They're about the fantastic, the unbelievable and the joyous. They may not reflect the real India, but they're an escape an ideal to aspire to, a place where dreams come alive on the big screen. So, as I sit back, popcorn in hand, giggling at the exaggerated fight scenes and dancing to tunes that magically burst out of nowhere, I know that Indian cinema is a mad, joyous carnival I never want to leave. It's the unfiltered essence of entertainment, a show that doesn't just go on, but continues to evolve, celebrating love, laughter and all the vivid colors life has to offer. After all, where else can you find a movie that throws logic out the window and invites you to join a party that never ends?